Good afternoon. So this training is for anybody who has the accommodation of breaks. So extra breaks, extended breaks, or breaks as needed. So we're gonna go through this manual. So this manual that we're using today is for extra breaks and extended breaks. It is the same if you have breaks as needed, and we'll talk about what is the difference between those breaks as we go through this training. So first, to start the day, you need to pick up materials in the small gym after 6.45, but before 7.10. In your testing materials, there are gonna be your test books and your rosters. You are gonna have one roster that's for attendance and one that will be left in your testing box. In addition, for breaks, there will be individual timing sheets with timing codes on how long breaks are. So you can make sure that those are appropriately accounted for. In your testing box, you're gonna have the testing room materials report form. This must be completed and it's on the back cover of this manual. This is used to indicate testing room information, the proctor, the room number, and test materials issued. Before the test date, you need to read this entire manual. These manuals will be in your mailbox that is, and it is specifically tied to the accommodations that you are providing. So you won't have to go through all of the different scripts. The scripts that you need will be there. Because you are testing students with accommodation, you will have a non-administrative report or a NAR report. This is essentially a piece of paper that documents which accommodation students have and you not only will have the blank form, but you'll also have an example of how to fill it out. You need to make sure that that meets, that that matches your testing roster to make sure that students are receiving their appropriate accommodations. So you are testing students with accommodations. Now, as you can see, there are different scripts. If you are a breaks as needed person, you will be using script one standard time for accommodated students. If you are an extra breaks proctor, you will be using script two, standard time with extra breaks. If you are an extra breaks and extended breaks proctor, you will be using script two, because extended means that the breaks are doubled. If you are just an extended breaks proctor, you'll be using script one. This information is not necessary for the accommodations that you guys are using. So we're gonna kind of skim over this because you are not using computers and there is no essay. So all of this information is in your manual. We have not removed anything for you. So when we go to during the test, during the test you need to double check that your testing room matches, that you cover and remove all instructional material, um, that you assign seats at random or by prearrangement. If you are a breaks as needed proctor, you will have one student in your room, so that shouldn't be a problem. You need to post the following information, the test date, school name, city, our test code, which is 143796, sorry, that's our school code, and then your three-digit test testing room. You need to then account for your testing material. Room roster, making sure you have a copy of your NAR, making sure you have enough test books, answer sheets, an optional test in progress sign. Blank forms, including an irregularity report. Um, you need to see John Peters if you feel that those are needed. If at any time you have questions about a process or feel that something may be a little bit off, please contact John or Dave so we can kind of process that through with you. Um, before you admit students to your testing room, count the testing books, compare the serial numbers, Make sure that everything that is in your testing book matches to what you actually have or your testing box matches to what you actually have. After testing has begun, you need to record the distribution of test books in your room by writing the serial numbers on the seating chart. That must be turned in and that is at the back of this manual. After testing, record the serial numbers of the test books that you're returning in part A of the form. As we administer the test, as I said, script one is for um, extended breaks and breaks as needed. Script two is for extra breaks or extra and extended breaks. Those specific scripts are in your manuals and will be there when you, when you get to that section. When you administer the test, you need to admit students one at a time, taking care to assign them at random. Do not admit a student who is not on your roster. If you don't know them, please find a DA, 
you know, a hallway monitor, an administrator to help you. But we need to make sure that all of the students who are supposed to be in your room are in your room. If they are not on your roster, do not let them in. For those who are present, please write a P next to each of their names. If they are absent, mark it with an A. If a student arrives late, you can admit them as long as you have not already started the time sections of the test. Meaning that if you have not started the time on the reading test or the math test, for example, they are able to enter throughout up until that point. So through pre-administration, through directions, they are able to process through and enter that um, at that time. Make sure that you accurately time each test. Students must be given the entire amount of time and can't move to the, S to the next SAT section until time is called. You must record the start and stop signs on the lines provided in the script and post those times for students. You should also announce the remaining time at regular intervals. So when there's 10 minutes left or 15, you know, regularly remind students how much time they have left on their test. Monitor breaks. You need to post the break time and include what time testing will resume. Walk around the room to confirm all the test books are closed and answer sheets are placed inside them. Students are not allowed to access phones during their breaks. So if a student has extra extended or breaks as needed, they are not allowed to access phones. Students may eat or drink in designated areas, which is outside of the entry door, but do not allow students to access their bags or backpacks until the test is over. If students need to use the restroom, they are able to one at a time under hallway supervision. We need to continue to account for all materials. Calculators cannot be used on the no calculator section of the math test unless they have a specific accommodation for a four function calculator. If they have that accommodation, that calculator will be included within your testing box labeled for that student to use. We do not have calculators to give us as students. Scheduled breaks. Students must remain in the room during scheduled breaks, and this could change depending upon extra or extended breaks. So students who receive standard time on the entire test, whether taking a test with or um, with other accommodations, uh, will receive a 10 minute break after section one, a five after section three, and a two after section four. In your testing box will be individual, individual timing codes for your students' breaks. If they have extra breaks or extended, those will be in there. So you should be able to see how those are timed out. If you have any questions at any time, please feel free to reach out to Dave. Be more than happy to answer those questions. Unscheduled breaks, the clock does not stop. So to maintain security, st staff should adhere to the following guidelines. Inform students that they won't get extra testing time, allow one student at a time to take an unscheduled break, and again, make sure that their testing materials are closed and secure. The accommodations that all of you are providing do not have any sort of computer or braille use. So maintain testing security throughout. Make sure you follow the scripts exactly, remain vigilant at all times, one staff member in the room at all times, and that students do not use, do not use calculators, phones, or prohibitive aids during breaks. We also need to monitor test materials at all times. This means walking around the room to check that everyone is working on the correct section. Monitoring the room will also prevent copying and communication. We also do that by ensuring proper spacing between students, uh, continuing to watch for mobile phone use, and observing the students when they are not when they are using a calculator or not using a calculator. Um, if there are any irregularities whatsoever, if you feel that something's off or that something maybe wasn't handled appropriately, please contact Dave or John immediately, and we'll go through the irregularity report process. There will be a apologize. There will be a warning script to talk about phones. Once that script has been read, um, a student cannot access their cell phone. If there is a noise or you notice that it goes off, do not inspect the um, device, but call an administrator for help. Um, in addition, prohibitive items include Bluetooth devices, wireless earbuds, headphones, highlighters, scratch paper. We will be going with option one, meaning that if um, when students come to the door, they'll be given a baggie to put their phones in during testing time. Um, we're going to have them label that, and then that way we're going to be able to track their phones and make sure that they don't get um, distracted by them. Medical devices. If your student has a medical device of any kind, um, you will be notified by Dave if this applies to your room. 
So then we get into the scripts for accommodated testing. So this is all including your manual about confirming the power off, required fields, check to do things correctly. And as you'll see, as you get into the meat and potatoes of the testing manual, we have the appropriate script that you need to use. If a student has breaks as needed, that means that they are stopping the clock. They're stopping the clock, stopping testing time to be able to do whatever they need to do. Check blood sugar, um, could be to use the bathroom, could be just because it's an accommodation. If they have extra breaks, that means that they have an extra break in between testing sessions. So an hour testing session, they would have a five minute break in between it. If they have extended breaks, that means that a standard break time of five minutes will now be 10 minutes if a student has that accommodation. And excuse me, as I just try to find the exact page where all of this information is located, but I wanna make sure that you have it. Here it is. So page 26. Extra breaks gives students approved for extra breaks, the same breaks that extended time students receive as noted in the script, a break in between each test section and an extra break in the middle of sections one, four, and the SAT, essay, which we are not doing. Extended breaks is extended breaks to approve students by doubling the standard time. If you're provided both extra and extended, you'll get a 10 minute break in between each test section. That will be noted on your timing sheet. Breaks as needed is a stop the clock. Most students needs can be met within a 10 minute period, but if the student requests additional time, they are able to access it. And as we said at the end, um, at the end of this manual, you'll see kind of the distribution of testing materials, as well as a testing form, and all the things that you're going to need to fill out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever about the accommodations that you are providing, please let me know, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have.